think about our dinner plans. Thank you. Uh, Robert Bianchi is here with us now, former prosecutor and criminal defense attorney. Sung Min Kim, White House reporter for The Washington Post, was also kind enough to stick around. So, Robert, let me start with you. Peter teed us up nicely for this conversation. Could there be some kind of a deadline? Could there be the potential for a subpoena to the president, which would set up this massive legal battle? What do you make of this? I, I, all those things. This is unbelievable as a prosecutor who led a prosecutorial agency. I give people an opportunity to come in. If they don't come in to answer all questions, and this is the way the federal government works, right. and I've worked with uh, joint investigations with them, then you go to the grand jury, and as simple as that. They, playing these games is really going to poke the FBI and the U.S. attorney in the eye every time they do it. They're playing this cat and mouse game, and what I find most interesting is a final point here, is that he's willing to talk about anything other than obstruction, which to me is a tell that we've got problems with respect to obstruction, but we don't have, in their estimation, problems with respect to, coll to collusion. This is not the normal way it's done. Usually you either go in or you don't. Enough game playing. Well, let me ask you a question. You describe it as a game, but from Robert Mueller's perspective, is it in fact standard operating procedure? Is there value to putting in writing, hey, I'm trying to reach out to you. Hey, I want to talk to you. Here's all the times that I've asked you for this. Is that something that, that a special counsel would do in this case? Contrary to popular belief, the president is getting more courtesies, more genuflecting than the average guy on the street every day who is going to jail for far less. And so, yes, I think Mueller is playing a little bit of a political game because he has to protect the integrity of the investigation and say, we have tried ad nauseum for six months to have an interview and they refuse. So this way, when the when the Trump team, right. if you will, says we weren't given ample opportunity, Mueller has a demonstrable record of all the opportunities given. So, man, Bob says, hey, the president's getting a ton of courtesy from Robert Mueller. The president sure doesn't seem to feel that way, right? How concerned is the White House about this based on your and your colleagues reporting? Uh, clearly, um, it is getting under the president's skin. Um, my colleagues have also done reporting on just how, I mean, the president has been irritated with the Mueller probe for some time, but that anger just seems to be ramping up in these last several weeks. I think he tweeted something like, you know, 20 times about the Mueller probe in April and May. He tweeted about the Mueller probe more than 40 times in the last two months. So clearly, there is a lot of anger there. Um, and the subpoena issue is interesting, too, because we know on the shows earlier this week that that Jay Sekula, one of his attorneys, yeah. said if a subpoena for his testimony does occur, they expect that fight to go to the Supreme Court. Remember, there's a Supreme Court confirmation battle going on. Right. Brett Kavanaugh has talked about these issues of executive power, his view that a president can't be you know, criminally pursued while he's in office, that it would be a distraction. And you can bet that Democrats will clearly make this a, a focal point of those confirmation hearings. Bob, what about what we heard from Don Jr. in our lead up to this conversation? The idea that, hey, there's nothing new under the son about this meeting, you know, his, his father's tweeting about it Sunday, talking about this Trump Tower discussion. There is reporting from Sung Min's uh, paper that there is real concern on the part of the president about whether his kid might be in legal jeopardy. I've been saying this from the get-go. <laughs> this is where the issue is. It's not necessarily about protecting himself. That Trump Tower meeting and now the admission the president is making in the tweet that it was for political purposes, which is, if in fact correct, a crime to get something of value from a foreign person to influence an election. He's worried about his son, mm. and you can't stop him from testifying against his son because there is no block there constitutionally. This is what this case is about. And I don't know, his tweets, i got to be honest with you, are a prosecutor's gold mine. As a prosecutor myself, I'd be knocking everyone down, putting them inside of a timeline. And this one Sunday was the mother of all tweets. He fell into the trap by trying to protect his kid. And he put basically there, I admit my son took this meeting for political purposes, but nothing came of it. But Hallie, last point, nothing has to come with it. Mm. A conspiracy is an attempt to try to do something in a substantial step in that direction. So even if President Trump is completely innocent of that Trump Tower meeting, gulp, gulp, and didn't know anything about it, his son, Manafort and Jared Kushner are at serious risk because of that tweet. Bob Bianchi. Killing it in the suit in Somerville, my friend. Thank you. We got to get some fans on you guys. Sung Min, thank you. By the way, first job at the Star Ledger right here in Somerville. Indeed. Back. Nice little homecoming. Exactly. <laughs> Love it, guys. Thank you for coming on set. I really appreciate it. We have much more.